Good evening. Today is March 2nd. It was a range day, or as Victor calls it, a day for the infrastructure to make money. S&P 500 traded in a 30-point range for most of the day, uh, which was expected after yesterday's um, big run-up. And 3900 level was tested a few times, and we sold off at the end of the day to close at 38.72. And now we're down a few more points after hours. NASDAQ sold off over 200 points or one and a half percent as Senator Warren calls to break up big tech. And with more vaccines coming up, people are back to actual stores and online shopping is down. And Facebook CFO warned that recovery from COVID could slow growth. White House today said that they will have enough vaccines for every adult by the end of May. And inflation is back in the conversation again as Michael Burry keeps tweeting about Germany and saying that direct payments are very inflationary. And even Tucker Carlson from Fox News picked it up. And uh, it's not a terribly woke day as progressive Democrats are upset at the party that $15 minimum wage is not making, in making it into the COVID bill. And many Democrats are now calling for Cuomo to resign as a third woman came today, accused him of sexual harassment. And at the end of the day, the New York legislature passed some sort of deal to repeal Cuomo's powers. And in Texas, the governor has completely opened up the economy. And he said that everything is 100% open at 100% capacity. And he ended the statewide mask mandate. Bitcoin tested 50,000 soji level today and quickly sold off and now is trading at 47 and a half. And oil was down for the third day in a row. Victor, what do you make of today's markets? Well. It was bad for the S&P. It was not woke enough. It was a MAGA day. Dr. Seuss did it all hmm. by, by eliminating Dr. Seuss. It created a revulsion among the wokes, which is bad for the market. And with the third accuser for Cuomo, that was not woke. We need some more woke for the stock market to go up. But considering everything, the Nikkei was at 29, 40, 40, 53, refused to go down substantially. The European markets were up significantly versus the US. We should have a very strong end of the week. The bonds, held their own, they didn't, they neither rose nor declined, crude broke below 60. Really the, the price tells everything. You could have told, told what the news was. I'm reminded of a story from Beethoven. He spent five years chasing his nephew Carl away, around, spent five years in litigation, he told, told Germany, told Vienna that I'll, ha I'll have to go back to Bonn if you don't give me custody of call. He could have been writing his greatest works during that time, about from 1810 to 1815. Anyway, the court finally agreed that he would have custody, but he'd have to take call to school. So he took call to a secondary school and the headmaster said, oh, maestro, it's so, so good to see you. Uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you'll come back. And Beethoven said, yes, I'll be back. And there he was, he had taken up quarters in an apartment across the street from the school and he was there with a telescope watching Carl's every move. So the same way Beethoven will be back, the S&P will be back. 
And now I have another treat, a person whose mojo was similar to Beethoven, the most famous musician of the 19th century, Verdi. And he gave a little heads up as to how anyone should run a, a business or a, an operation and a Frenchman was in the orchestra and described how Verdi was. I think this is very important. This is actually. To its length and complexity, Don Carlo received eight full dress rehearsals He's talking in preparation for this Paris premiere, whereas in Italy, one or two such rehearsals at the most would have taken place. It was at one of these Paris dress rehearsals that a journalist for Le Figaro, one Monsieur J. Claritier, snuck into the theater and hiding in one of the boxes, watched and listened to the third act of Don Carlo. His account of what he saw makes extraordinary reading, as he was one of the very few outsiders to ever observe Verdi during a rehearsal. We quote, with the lights down, the only living things in that huge hall were the stage and that orchestra, which had been expanded just for this opera. The conductor, that home in hand, like a colonel before the attack, studied his soldiers as they crouched in the trench of the orchestra pit. Directly in front of him, at the very front center of the stage, was there, seated on a straight chair, his large hands resting on his knees, motioning like some Assyrian god, thoughtful, listening with his whole being, completely absorbed in that music which had come vibrant and alive from his heart. He is a tall man, thin, his long, shaggy, thick hair tossed across his forehead in heavy locks, his beard mottled black, but splashed with a bit of gray at the chin. Two deep lines run down his cheeks, an emaciated face, thick eyebrows, electrifying eyes, a large mouth that is bitter and contemptuous, a proud, masculine air, and a defiant attitude. He listens. He hears twice as much, three times as much as the others, questions everything. He hears the chorus and the brasses together, gets up, leaps, encouraging all those groups, and exclaims in French with that Italian accent that makes his voice so fascinating. There is a rest there. Come on, quick, over here, quick, come on. And over there, softly, lovingly, he gets up, he beats the time, snaps his fingers, and that sharp noise, so quick, nervous, like the noise of castanets, can be heard over the orchestra and the chorus. It excites them, moves them along like the snapping of a whip. He is music from head to foot, fighting for his ideals, pouring his genius into those men, those women, searing them with his own flame, striking the stage floor with his heels, running upstage, stopping the choristers, seeking his own true meaning in that chaos out of which a whole world is born. Monsieur Claretier concluded his article with a paragraph that must have made Verdi smile. We continue our quotation. So here is a man who is rich, honored, glorious, who from his art can only expect new tribulations, more fatigue, Laurels won with the greatest difficulty, triumphs paid for with disappointments and sleepless nights and rage. He has an income of 80,000 francs a year. His name has sent a message of freedom to his country, a call to arms. In the theater, he fights for something better. So he goes on, struggle, works. He carries his burdens like an athlete. When people talk to him about his celebrity, he says, I am just a peasant. So be it. He is one of those peasants who win battles and discover new worlds. Now, you might say, what does this have to do with the market? Actually, if you're running a market group, that's the way you should handle it. You should run to the person who's buying the bonds and the person who's selling the stock market. And what are you doing? Verdi happened to be the largest landholder in Italy. 
He was also one of the, he was the richest composer ever. He was a great businessman. Uh, he would name his own price whenever, whenever he was asked uh, to write an opera for, for uh, Aida, which was written for the opening of the Suez Canal. He was paid four times as much as any opera composer had ever been paid before. He was a great man. His personality was very similar, similar to Beethoven's. His operas are, um, had a completely new dynamic in the 19th century. In any case, uh, I think it's an inspiring tale. It's about, it's how someone should look at the market same way Beto uh, already looked at the uh, at the uh, orchestra. In any case, we will be back. I predict we will be back in the S and P in the next two days, and we will be as rich as Verdi <laughs> if we buy it. I believe I've been wrong before. Thank you very much, Yelena. Thank you. We'll see tomorrow, whether we get rich like Verdi. Beethoven was quite wealthy also. They were both completely abstemious, both misers, because Verdi was very charitable. Beethoven would sell uh, the same piece three or four times. And I'm a font of anecdotes about Beethoven. Next time it's relevant to the market, I'll relate another one. Anyway, it's it's good to have a little music interlude on a day like this. Okay, very good. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night.